Welcome to the Property Management Mastermind Show with your host, Brad Larson. Brad owns one of the fastest growing property management companies in San Antonio, Texas. This podcast is for property managers by property managers. You'll hear from industry leading professionals on best practices, new ideas, success stories, and lessons learned. This is your opportunity to learn about the latest industry buzz surrounding property management, as well as tips and strategies to improve your business. Now here's your host, Brad Larson. This episode of the Property Management Mastermind Show is sponsored by Lead Simple and Four and a Half. They have teamed up to come up with one of the best conferences for anyone in or around the property management industry to attend. It's called the PM Grow Summit. This conference is laser focused on growth strategies and thought leaders from around the country. Now, I personally attended their PM Grow Summit last year and was truly impressed with the format, the venue, the quality speakers, and the level of attendance. And that was just their first year putting it on. This year's PM Grow Summit will be held in San Diego in early 2018, and it's shaping up to look like another fantastic event you will not want to miss. I've already booked my spot for the conference, and I will encourage listeners to do the same. You can learn more by going to pmgrowsummit.com. As an additional incentive, you can enter in the promo code BRAD, B-R-A-D, to get a $100 discount when booking your ticket. If you ever need an excuse to go to San Diego and stay at one of the historic downtown hotels, this is your chance. Do not miss this event. Again, go to pmgrowsummit.com and enter in the promo code B-R-A-D for a $100 discount out of admission. Well, everyone, this is Brad Larson. I want to give you a quick update and rundown of what this conversation with Ben White is going to be about. So to paraphrase, Ben's going to introduce himself and he's going to talk a lot about the Leading Property Managers Association, LPMA, and talk about its U.S. expansion efforts. And this is an organization that I've been a part of. Uh, I've been to their conference. I've spoke at their conference. and I think they do a class act uh, above and beyond anything you may have seen here in the States next to the PM Grow Summit, who does it just as well. And what Ben's offering is anytime that you potentially want to go to either Australia or New Zealand, he's offering conferences for free for American uh, property management company owners or American property managers that want to go to Australia or New Zealand. He says, if you're going to make the trip over there, uh, he'll waive the conference fee for you to join and expand into one of his conferences. Also, one of the exciting parts of what we're going to talk about is their accounting standard project that's going to be coinciding with some of our efforts to standardize the accounting practices for property management companies. And this is going to be an industry-wide effort that we can try to get everybody on the same page. And in talking with Ben and his colleagues, they're on the exact same mindset of getting this perfected and done. So that's going to be uh, quite exciting to hear. And I'm, I'm looking forward to doing more of that. And lastly, I wanted to pitch just a little bit for Tenant Turner. I've been real happy with those guys' services over there. So I would highly recommend somebody to use Tenant Turner as their uh, showing resource. And give Calvin a call over there at tenantturner.com, and he'll be able to explain their services. You can use the promo code BRAD for a discount. So let's have a listen to Ben. And welcome to another edition of the Property Management Mastermind Show. Today's guest, I have Ben White. And he's a distinguished guest coming to us from Australia. Uh, Ben's got a long history of property management. He's been in our office. We had dinner together last night. Uh, we had some great conversations. And today we're going to do a podcast talking about, it's going to be kind of an open book. I mean, we don't really have a hardcore agenda. I want to hear some things from Ben. I'll ask him some tough questions potentially. But it's really going to be an opportunity for us to get to know him and the LPMA business a bit better. I've been very impressed with it. If you know me, you know I've been a big fan of LPMA. I've quoted many people on the show. Uh, anyone that's talked to me on our mastermind discussions via phone, I've mentioned LPMA and the Australians. So I'm super excited to have Ben in studio today. Ben, how are you? Yeah, good. Thanks, Brad. Thanks for having me. Give us a quick intro of yourself. Uh, wow. So I joined the property management industry 12 years ago, and my first job in it was, uh, I really fell into it, but uh, I joined my family's business, which is a real estate franchise group in Australia, New Zealand, and Indonesia. And it has about 1,100 shop fronts uh, as a franchise network. And in Australia, a, property, a real estate franchise typically has two businesses. They all have sales, predominantly a sales brokerage business, and most of them also have a property management arm. But sales is the dominant uh, economic uh, driver traditionally in real estate in Australia. And so I joined and we built out from that point on a franchise model for property management as well. So out of, across those 1,100 shop fronts, the network collectively manages about 300,000 doors, uh, residential, 
and you typically detached houses sometimes or apartments as well to some extent uh, across Australia, New Zealand, Indonesia. So I really fell into that and uh, that occupied about 10 years of my time building that out. Uh, we built out uh, a franchise model has we started with policies, procedures, and then we got into training, and then we got into consulting, and then we got into financial models, and the whole thing kind of built one layer on a time. It was a lot of fun. Uh, and the last couple of years, I've stepped away from that and more now into the LPMA, which is Leading Property Managers Association, which is a different business model. It's not about the brand in a franchise sense of, a, of how, to, uh, how to change everyone's brand and op operate as a single network, but it's instead focus on how do we get the, the leading property managers together across not just Australia, New Zealand, but now across America as well to share ideas, to drive best practice and essentially support each other to be excellent. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really the defining challenge going forward for our industry is going to be less about um, how do we compete, but it's actually how we work together in a funny way. And, and one of my core beliefs is that uh, it, it's a, it, it is not, no longer true that your biggest competitor is the best agency in your marketplace. So it used to be that your biggest competitor is the, was the, the one you feared most was the best one. Mm -hmm. And I think now we've our industry's got to the point where the one we should fear most is the worst ones because it's the worst property management companies that are dragging down our industry. I think there's, with what's coming with disruption and technology and all sorts of things, it's the weakest in our pack that are going to define our industry. And I think that's really dangerous for us. So I'm really eager to find ways to work with the best property management businesses to be extraordinary and really separate our industry into the extraordinary and, and the below average. It and creates opportunity when people do things really bad for the people that do things really good. So I don't know if we'll ever be able to eliminate the bad operators, but it, there's going to be a faction out there that's going to be able to assist them to become better. Uh, and some of the listeners out there might be asking, well, why do I need to listen to somebody from Australia? It's a totally different market. And I have to tell people this, I have to coach them because the penetration that you guys get into the market, meaning that uh, the property manager, property management company owners in Australia, they get into about 70 to 80 percent of management from that particular rental market. 70 to 80 percent of homeowners that have homes use a property manager. Okay, 70 to 80 percent. Reverse that in the states. Yeah. I've heard 20 to 30 percent. So it's completely night and day for their penetration rate into the property management. Uh, owners in, uh, excuse me, manage, uh, uh, let me say it correctly, into the self-managed landlords, your penetration rates into 70, 80%. The other thing I want to talk about is the multiples. And we mentioned this in, in discussion earlier. Why do I need to listen to these guys from Australia? Because here's the bottom line is any management company in Australia today could probably sell for three, three and a half, maybe four times a multiple. Mm -hmm. Is that accurate? That's right. Yeah. So good luck getting one to one and a half, maybe two times multiple here in the States. And I know I'm going to get some hate mail. I always say this, you know, people are going to say, I sold for three times revenue. Well, if, if a management company in Australia went up on the market and they advertised for a certain price and it made sense within that three or four times multiple ratio, how many buyers do you think they'd have? Well, if you, everyone would be, anyone in the trade area would look at it. You'd exactly. be, it's just one of those things you have to do. Yeah. So it would uh, be it would be gone in a minute. Yeah. I mean, somebody was going to buy that. They'll do their due diligence and they'll go ahead and buy it. It's a little bit tougher in the states. So the bottom line is, their penetration is double ours, and their valuation is double ours. So maybe we should pay attention to you guys. Would that be a fair assessment? Yeah. Well, I think there's it's uh, America does in competitive American Australian uh, culturally is so similar. Uh, America's advanced in almost every way to Australia. The only thing, for some reason, we seem to have had a preoccupation with real estate, and our, our infatuation with real estate is more than yours. It's a very retail thing. It's very common. If you were at a friend's at a dinner party with a, with a friend's house and there were 10 people there, two or three people there would own an investment property. Mm -hmm. And it's just what you talk about. So the same way you guys might talk about the NBL or whatever it might be, the NBA rather, and so on, we would talk about uh, investing in real estate, what's happening to yields. Um, everyone's got a mortgage. Uh, on their own house, and most people have a mortgage on investment property. It's just that we're much more, uh, the, it's just one of those things you do. So uh, we've tried to work to find a way that if you have a investment property, you need a property manager. It's just how, the, how we work. And so, uh, but otherwise our industry is so similar and it's really uh, an artificial distinction to say, uh, you shouldn't hear from someone in, in, from Australia and vice versa, Australians should be hearing more from Americans as well, just mm -hmm. because I think uh, we share a common problem, we share a common industry, and uh, yeah, and we've we've so far managed to outstrip valuations, and we've also had more success 
in that penetration into the market. Yeah. Uh, but if you take New Zealand, New Zealand's uh, much like America. So it's it's an anomaly. Uh, Australia is an outlier. But the things that unite us, uh, one third of basically all home stock in both our countries are rented properties. A third of the population rents. It's just how our social societies work. That a third of the people rent a house and um, that's where our role fits. I think that's a similar number here in the States as far as the uh, how many people rent homes versus home ownership, mm -hmm. which by the way, home ownership now is at its lowest level in 20, 30 years. I can't remember the exact stat, but uh, it's down below 50% or something. I, I don't want to misquote that, but it's low. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't think of it off the top of my head. But that's, that's an indication that less people are buying homes, less people are owning homes, and more renters, millennials, are coming into the market and they just want to rent and be able to have that freedom of movement yep. to where they're not tied down to owning a home. So we're we're seeing a population trend more towards renting, which demands good service to manage those homes. Absolutely. We're also finding, on top of that, an increasing number of younger people buying their first home as an investment property somewhere they can afford, but renting where they live. So even increasingly, tenants are property investors as well. And so this idea of historically, well, tenants are the unfortunate ones in society and they kind of need to be pitied. And then you've got the landowners who are the rich and wealthy. That's all been jumbled as well. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, I think, um, that's the society we're going to live in. Yeah. A couple and things I do want to mention here is you had a book out a while back. Uh, and I don't want you to go through the whole thing with, about the book because you did this on a, on a previous podcast with, uh, with Jordan. Mm -hmm. And that was a great podcast, by the way, Jordan Mueller's podcast, uh, The Profitable Property Management Show. And you and him discussed your book in detail. I got a lot out of that podcast, by the way. Um, I just want to give you, you know, an opportunity to say a minute or two or whatever about that book and then kind of where people can find it because I think that leads into why we're discussing what we are because you are basically the guy that understands it at a deep, deep, deep level. Yep. So please so do. I, I've been lucky enough to have visited um, well over a thousand property management companies and just, the, just by luck, when you get to see that many, you start drawing all the you see all the similarities. So I've just been lucky enough to see a lot of things and you start recognizing all the patterns. And so we actually have three books. Uh, one's on uh, strategy and how to choose a strategy in property management. And there's a whole series of things on how to evaluate your business. There's one around growth, which we talked about with Jordan, and one on how to structure an, a team and run a team. Uh, in terms of growth, it's called uh, Numbers Game. And it's really an attempt to help a business understand its growth potential and then work out how to go after it. And so we, lay, we set out a number of different channels and not channels like, well, there's the online channel, like where do you get leads from, but lead channels in the sense of where the new business can come from, which is people new buying new property in the market as investors, people switching between property management companies, self-managed investors, and so on. And so we set out a whole methodology for how to actually measure those and size them in your marketplace. Because one of the most common things I get asked by people is they come along and say, look, I'm uh, just turned 50. I want to retire in five years. I've been in business for... 20 or 30 years and I've got 200 doors. Now I want to retire in five years with a thousand. And so they spent 30 years getting to 200. Now they want to get 800 in the last five years of their career. And they kind of just declare these goals as if they can just be invented. And so one thing we actually do is with the goal of that book was actually initially started with those conversations, which is, well, if you start, let's look at your marketplace. How many investment properties are there? How many competitors are there? How many people are buying properties in the area? What's the turnover rate? Uh, how many people live in rent? Each area has different uh, rental rates. And so you go through and use the data and you can work out, actually predict relatively accurately the growth potential for an agency over five, 10 years. Um, and then all you have to do to then structure for growth, because you have, there's two kind of problems. One is how big is the pool, which is the first problem. The other one is then what are you gonna do to go after that pool? And so if, say you have a potential pool of a thousand managements a year in your trade area, uh, then you have to decide how much of that you want. Do you wanna get 10%, 20, 30%? Uh, and those decisions are complex ones that aren't just, well, I want more, so let's just make it 30%. It's actually, well, are you prepared to make the changes in team? Are you prepared to do the work on marketing? Are you prepared to invest? Are you prepared to put on BDMs? And all these things you have to do, the growth just doesn't come, unfortunately, just because you decide you want it. The Numbers Game book, is that on audio yet? It's not on audio. There's a Kindle version um, and a, um, uh, a book version. You get it on Amazon. If you search on Amazon, they're okay. on there. There's actually three of them up there you'll see. Um, the connect, connecting the dots is the one around strategy, which is the first one. Uh, and that kind of sets a whole lot of stuff out. And we increasingly have tools for LPMA members. If you uh, want to implement any of those things, like five, uh, the numbers game or connecting the dots, says we have surveys and tools you can download and put in your business to measure all these things out. So there's a lot of resources as well. If, any, if anyone 
and if anyone needs help finding them, they can always email me, which I'll do at the end, I'm sure. Um, and I'm happy to send them or talk them through. I actually funny, I'm a real property management nerd. And uh, I'd say to everyone, you should call me. If you ever want to talk property management, I actually like talking about it. Yeah. And I just don't get that many phone calls, unfortunately. I don't know if, why that is. But um, I, uh, I, I would welcome a call from anybody, actually. Well, the numbers game stuff and the other two books, please put them on audio. Figure out a way. Pay somebody. I don't know. Yeah. That's, a, that's good, good clear, advice. Clearly, the point of that is if anyone's listening to this podcast, they're probably driving. Yep. They would probably love to switch over and listen to your book at some point. For me, I got a 30 minute commute to and from the office, and I always listen to either an audio book or a podcast back and forth. So I got a good hour a day mm -hmm. to invest in listening to those types of things. So I would love to see you put that on audio books. I usually listen through I, uh, iBooks, I think it is, mm -hmm. the, the Apple version of it, and that works out pretty well. So I'm, I'm a big fan of that. And we always talk about mobile university, you know, when you can do your best learning. Uh, long trips and drives and commutes. That's the best time to listen to this stuff, which is why everyone's listening to this podcast potentially now. Uh, some of the things that we want to switch into talking about is kind of why you're making this American tour. Uh, I want you to kind of have carte blanche to talk about whatever you want there uh, because you're in San Antonio. We had dinner last night and you're going on to San Francisco, right? Mm -hmm. uh, later on this evening, uh, you're going to go visit the guys at the PM Grow Summit, Jordan and Alex. And so in your, in your tour of the, of the states, kind of give me a synopsis of what you're doing. So what we're doing is really we have two businesses on our side. LPMA is, is the Leading Property Managers Association, which that is a, a membership model. We have about 200 property management company members across Australia and New Zealand. And the, what we do is we take uh, a whole set of resources and support mechanisms for a business. They pay a subscription and we give them everything from forms and letters, which are kind of very technical, all the way through to business models and consultants and to, to help people actually run their business. Uh, and so all the way from technical side to business support is what LPMA is all about. And we've, uh, there's a hit long history to that. We got involved in that business uh, in the last 12 months, but we added in other things we've been doing. So we merged a few businesses together. The so, business support and the consulting, I think, is gonna be something that people out there are really keen to. Uh, because you're bringing some of that here to the States. That's right. And so one thing I l learned along the way, I was naive enough when I got started in property management to think, you know what, this can be solved if you just write a really good checklist. So I spent the first six months writing checklists. I sat in a room with a few people and we actually spent six months writing policy procedures manuals and checklists. Mm -hmm. And I was naive enough to think that was my work was done. Um, how good is this? I don't, and what am I going to do with the rest of my life? That was kind of, I remember actually thinking that when we printed the first version. And unfortunately, it turns out that the technical side of property management which is what letter to send on what day and so on is pretty trivial in the scheme of things. And uh, the much bigger problem is how to run a business and how to get the culture right, how to structure a team, where should you invest, how do you set your fees, how do you set a point of difference, how do you market? All those are business problems that aren't just property management problems, they're anyone who runs a business, that, mm -hmm. that's the issue. Because the checklists and stuff are great, but the implementation of that and the handholding yep. is what a lot of people do need uh, if, if they paid a consultant to come into their business or even from remotely, they paid a consultant to look at their business, they're more apt to implement those ideas and procedures into their business. And it might be painful in the beginning. They got to write a check up front. They got to go through that, you know, the cavity search in the beginning. But at the end, six months, a year later, they're going to start reaping those rewards. And I'm really excited to see you doing that because yeah. the checklist in itself, the silver platter, here you go. Here's how you make extra money. Here's how you do this. Here's how you run your business. It just doesn't go with a lot of folks because they're too busy operating the business versus stepping outside of answering emails and phone calls and chasing their kids around and everything that gets in, in the way. Uh, they're too busy doing that. It would be great to have a consultant come in and just say, okay, we're going to grab this by the horn and go. Yeah, that, that's, the longer I've been in, involved is that's to me is that what you're just saying is more and more convinced that that's how you have to run this. You have to see this as a business problem, not just a property management problem. And our industry is going through a lot of challenges, but it's hard to run it to deal with an owner, an owner rings up and has a problem with this or a tenant rings up has a problem with that. You got to deal with those, but you still have to find time to think about the future of your business. And so the consulting model we have, which we're um, planning to bring into America as well as we call it our affiliate program. So we work with a number of really high quality um, consultants in the industry and we train them on all the things like the, the growth models we have or the strategy models or the financial models. We train them all on all the resources we've built over the last 12 years. And they then work with the business to implement them. So if you, someone would say read numbers game or hopefully listen to it mm -hmm. shortly, don't take that <laughs> advice. Uh, then there's one thing, there's a certain group of people that can say, I'll go and implement that in my business. And that's great. And that's really excites me that people can do that. But a lot of people, uh, cause they have 
a thousand things going on, actually, I think, find value in saying, well, can someone come in and help me do that and run the, run the project for me, which is a consulting model. Mm -hmm. And so we've been doing that in Australia now for 10 years, and uh, we, uh, we're just looking for people uh, to partner with us on that, and we'll um, go work, move that forward. So it's a big part of change, is because uh, ultimately, you can have a business selling stuff, uh, selling letters and selling this the, in the old days, the you know, the CD, the DVD version of everything. Mm -hmm. But unless someone's actually achieving change over time, you're not creating value. And that's really what we want our LPMA to be. Yeah, the thing that's been impressing me about my membership with LPMA is the amount of resources that you have on the site. Uh, it's just overwhelming. I mean, to be kind of upfront with you about it, you look at everything that's out there and it's it's a lot. There's so many good things on that site. There's so many things that you can grab and, and use. Uh, having a consultant to come in to somebody and say, all right, let's focus on top five for mm -hmm. you. And here's one, two, three, four, five. And here's the resources available from LPMA. We're going to implement this and get you going on this and this year. And it might be, you can't say, go do these hundred things this year. It might be narrow that down to let's do five things this year. I so much in that. That's a, I think that's a really important thing. There's, there's only so much you can do and presenting someone with a hundred ideas is actually less valuable than presenting with no ideas because what's the point? And it's really about how do you curate that list down to important things and helping you achieve something. And, uh, that's that's really the art I think of that a good consultant is to actually focus you to, to actually in some ways fewer things because you can go to a conference like we've all gone to and you get all these great ideas and you walk around with 20 things on your list of to do's and by the following Monday morning you've forgotten most of them yeah or they become so overwhelming that you just kind of give up and so or, or the other thing too is going to your team and saying hey I was at this conference I want you guys to change 20 things tomorrow uh, is demotivating for them as well and that has all sorts of problems so it focusing and understanding what you want and reducing it down to some core issues. My staff hates when I go to conferences. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I come back and say, guess what? We're doing this yeah. and we're doing this and they just roll their eyes and uh, they call me ABC, always be changing. Yeah, right. <laughs> I got someone call me once, I was a B-52, which I thought was a compliment. And it turns out, he says, is what happens is uh, you're flying at 40,000 feet and you drop all your bombs. And by the time the bombs land, you're downrange. You can't even see it anymore. So, so that's your problem. It was feedback to me is that you kind of walk in the room and say, great, here's 20 things, mm -hmm. and then you leave the room. And then everyone's just like, what just happened? Yeah. What is he talking about? Uh, and it's, it's, uh, I guess you get the same, same reputation. Uh, you know, one of the coolest things we've implemented is uh, we switched banks from Business Bank of Texas, which is a great bank here locally. We switched it to Seacoast. That was our last podcast, was interviewing Allison with Seacoast. And that's been a tremendous switch. But the amount of work my staff has to do, my general manager and the other team members, you know, it's, it's substantial. But at the end of the day, it was worth it because they actually saw the value in it. Uh, I guess that's part of it, convincing a principal's got to convince the, the team that doing something has to add value to what they're doing, not just do it just to do it because of, you want to do it. Yeah, those uh, that's one right. example. I'm trying to actually give an actual concrete example. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you can run a team anymore just through because you're the boss, you can decide whatever ever happens. I think if that was ever a good time, that, that times aren't here anymore. Yeah. The people, the best people, which I think you have to work with the best people, and we had a great chat last night around um, that as well. But if, one of the core challenges I think in this business is attracting and retaining good stuff. And the best people won't work for you if you're just capricious and make stuff up or don't explain it to them and so mm -hmm. on. So I think um, that's one of the real answers. How do you attract the best people and keep them? Because that's, that's from all the research we've done and the data we have, that's the, one of the key driving factors of the economic profile of a successful business yeah. is how, how long it, it keeps their stuff. Let's talk a couple points on that because what I want to do is share what we do uh, here. So in every angle of our, our management business here, we try to incentivize the team members. So as we talked, our portfolio managers share the revenue of the management fees that are paid. Mm -hmm. So which means they don't get paid until the tenants pay rent until after the owners are paid and all that stuff. So they're highly incentivized to keep the owners and the tenants happy. Because if they lose an owner, they lose money. Mm -hmm. When they gain an owner, they go, woohoo, I'm happy, bring me 10 more. You know, so they're totally in the game versus if they were a straight salary, they, you know, you drop 10 homes on them, they're like, oh, great, you know, negative double thumbs up, they give you. Uh, so that's been one of the things we're, we're, we've been able to do to success here. Tying that into what I want you to talk about is the churn. You threw some stats at me the other day that if there's staff churn, mm -hmm. it creates a negative impact years down the road. Please expand on that. Yeah, so one of the products we have in LPMA is a dashboarding product that is a product that sits on top of a company's uh, data set and we take all the data and do fun things with it. But we've got amassed a data set that has uh, 
150,000 doors that are managed by 115,000 rather doors that are managed by LPMA members today, uh, and uh, because we take all the history of the data, we also have about 250,000 formally managed properties uh, managed in the past. So we have a big data set, and we've got in that data set every rent increase, every rent acceptance and disbursement to an owner, every work order that's gone out, basically every invoice that was paid. We've got history of everything. And so one thing that in the data we have is staff leaving. So we actually have this staff member left on this day um, and so on. And so one thing we, we've been interested in is what causes lost managements? And we've been looking at a whole lot of stuff. Is it an agency that has high vacancy rates? Does that have a high loss rate? Or is if a vacancy has a high or a really low rent arrears rate, is that a problem or a good thing? Where's What causes growth and so on? So we looked at a whole lot of things. We just looked at fees. One of the interesting things we found is that the fees an agency or property management company charges has no impact on the growth rate of its company. So if mm. one agency says, well, I should be, I need to lower my fees to compete, there's actually a lot of evidence to refute that. In fact, I can say with absolute certainty, because we have enough data, that landlords are not price sensitive or owners are not price sensitive at all. They're value sensitive. But if uh, there's no reason why a property management company can't earn 10, 12, whatever percent, or versus someone that says, oh, I can only earn five. But that's a whole lot of stuff in that. But to, to your question around um, churn, is that we looked at every staff property churn, manager, staff churn, staff churn, staff churn. Mm -hmm. We looked at every property out of our three hundred and fifty thousand property data set, and looked at every uh, management that ended, and we looked at every property manager that left. We went and looked at all the data, and it turns out that there's four. When a property manager leaves, there's four scenarios that can happen. Um, say you and I are two property managers, uh, and you leave, then. We've looked at it in four ways. We've looked at my properties that I manage and what happens to my properties when you leave. And then we looked at what happens to your properties when you leave. And in my case, there's two types of owners. There's owners that when they joined the agency were with me the whole time. So basically their entire experience with uh, the, our company is with me. And there's other ones where they've swapped around property managers over time. So there are two categories. Now in the case of uh, if you were to leave, I would only lose over the course of two years, 7% of my portfolio leaves, which we think is roughly the natural attrition rate of owners, roughly 7% will leave over two years just because they sell their property, mm -hmm. they, stuff happens. And so that's what would happen. So essentially when you leave properties that I've, or owners that I've had since they joined are unaffected. Now, if you don't take owners that have been with, not just with me, but with other property managers, I go from losing 7% to losing 15% of my portfolio. Wow, it doubles. It doubles, simply because our hypothesis is, well, it's just the churn that happens in, if I've got a long-standing relationship with my client, then we can survive it. But if the pro if the owner doesn't really know me that well and they've had two or three other people in the office already, when you leave, there's always a bit of chaos, then I double my loss rate. So that's a, that's happens, that's the first effect. Now, the amount that's of data that you got to collect that, that's a legitimate amount. Yes, and it's, it's not a, like a, a hundreds survey of, thousands of, of properties. 100 yeah. properties. These are like hundreds of thousands. Yeah, and it's through all the underlying court data. We have every single uh, event that happens in your database we, we have. So then if you take, that's just me, you, you, and you're the one that left. Mm -hmm. Now, if we look at your properties when you leave, there's two ways you can leave. You can either, and we can see in the data that happens is you might say, look, I'm going to leave in three months. And over the course of three months, we reassign your portfolio to someone else, which we call a warm handover. Now, in the case of a warm handover, the loss rate over two years is about 35%. Wow. So one third, if you decide to leave, we'll lose one third of your portfolio um, over two years. Uh, and if you have a cold leave, which is you just leave, you I'll walk in and say, walk out, I, yeah. I'm not coming in tomorrow. Yeah. Um, no warning or anything, then the loss rate's about 47%. So the cost of a lost staff member is so high. Now they can, and and not only that, the interesting thing is that you can actually see, we've looked the year before you leave and the year after you leave. So we've looked both ways. We can actually predict when you're gonna leave because we actually, you're, as, as a staff member before they leave, their loss rate actually increases. So what you actually find is dissatisfied staff who eventually will resign will actually lose managements early it actually happens before you even leave. The whole thing is a, is a vicious circle. And it's hard to explain, obviously, on a podcast. We've got a lot of data. There's a whole couple of blog posts written on lpma.com. They can go and see all the graphs and stats and read all about it. But um, uh, the fa they think that the is the biggest driving factor of loss management is not fees. It's not any other factor. It's whether or not you retain and keep good staff members. And that, to me, is becoming more and more the key issue in this industry is 
what is it what does it take to get the best people and what you're doing just from our discussion last night is a cutting edge and i think that's a real credit to you as a as a business person because not only do you run a great property management business you just run a great business and i think that's the that i think is what's going to define success now in this industry and not yeah. seeing a property manager as how can i cut how can i get someone really cheap or how can you know if there's a there's a big trend in australia historically not big but it's not small is where they have such high staff churn that they don't even give up email addresses to their staff so you wouldn't get brad at redworks.com you'd get pm1 at redworks.com oh, and wow. i get pm2 so they so, label so, them huh? exactly so if i leave then there's just another pm2 who cares oh wow and so okay. it's they they actually accept that on the basis that well we can't solve churn so let's just not call them names basically um is that working for them no, 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 no. It's horrible, huh? It, it's horrible on so many levels. It's amazing it still persists to this day. But it's the people swear by it. Say, so, well, I, I don't want my owners t to know who they Brad exists because mm -hmm. Brad's going to leave anyway, and I don't trust Brad's not going to go somewhere else to take these owners. So let's just not give Brad a name. We talked about some numbers, and that was when I was kind of quoting to you what our staff members were were making, and it does sound high. But the first thing you said is, oh, man, then your, your churn rate is going to be minimal, which means you're going to keep more accounts, which in the long run will benefit you more financially. Do, do you agree with that? Absolutely. I think there's no there's no economic. If you look at the economics of property management, nothing. There's very few things that can that can be more valuable to a, to a business than retention of existing owners. Uh, obviously, you can grow more. You can maybe get a bit more fees. All that's important and not to downplay it. But if you just look at the numbers, if you if you're hemorrhaging uh, contracts, mm -hmm. then nothing makes up for it. You can't save losing 20, 30, 40 managements by cutting your salaries by $5,000 yeah. because you're trying to save money. It just doesn't add up. And so that's that's it. And so I think that's the, if you could measure a business, a value a business, so where I think your point earlier around valuations, I think it will get more towards things like that. It's mm -hmm. going to be, if you have a lower staff churn, it's a more valuable business. It just is. Yeah, I agree. Uh, because uh, the value of a business is the retention of clients is why you're buying, essentially buying contracts. And what better way to have security on contracts by knowing your know, staff are keeping them. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think there's a, it's a, it's such an important part of our industry, which I'm excited just now that we've all often talked, I've spent 10 years talking about this kind of stuff and it's always been theory to your point. Um, now we have the data. It's so exciting if you say, well, look at the graph. Like no, it's all there. Like no, it's, no, it's, John, it's, I told you so. Yeah, it's like, you can't argue with it. So the people say, no, no, you have to cut fees to compete. It's like, well, it, but it's not true. Because yeah, I can show you 100,000 data points that says that's not actually true at all. In fact, the average fees we did by zip code, every single zip code in Australia, we looked at, now different zip codes have different averages of average fees, but within a zip code, they all bundle around a certain thing. Um, but they, it turns out that if you adjust for some people talk about, well, I'm at 10% and someone else might be 5% uh, management fees. But if you adjust for what the underlying rent is, it all works out to be probably the same. It's about $30 per week uh, in in recurring uh, fees mm -hmm. uh, across 600 postcodes. Yeah, so and for the listeners out there, Australians do weekly, right? We, we, so we, do, we do monthly. So they yeah. have 52 weeks in a year. We have 12 months. Uh, they charge a different percentage, which might sound lower than us, but at the end, it's the math is the same. It all kind of works out. And it's one of those things where the business is all essentially run uh, with, and then with have a whole, one of the things, the other thing we have for European members is a financial benchmarking product. But all those, you just go through the data, despite all the differences, there's kind of core rules of physics that apply through our industry. And if you, it's not about, you can grow despite having high fees. In fact, I think you can grow because of high fees in some ways, because it's the quality that comes through. You have higher fees, you can pay staff more, which means you have more retention and the whole thing works. Yeah, I, don't I think stole you... that idea, by the way, from LPMA, yeah, right. uh, the Masterclass CD, 2011. I think it was track three with Chris Rolls. And I'm, I'm no kidding, I've said this before on here, I've listened to that at least 100 times. Yeah, well, Chris uh, Because is, um... when we were redesigning our business model, trying to, to break the code from kicking over 400 homes, where everybody was doing everything and no one was doing anything. Mm -hmm. Nobody had ownership. And we designed this hybrid model that Chris Rolls was doing and put that into our business to perfection. And all that's generated back from LPMA, what you guys are doing at the conferences. So that's why I've always been a big fan. And that's been three, four years ago that we just really started listening to that. Yeah, well, Chris, is a, Chris is a remarkable person. For those who don't know about Chris Rolls, then you should. It's one yeah. of those guys, but uh, uh, he's, he was on you know, a generation ahead of everybody. And he's an all-star, and he's one of the guys that you typically get to... Yeah, one of the one amazing things about Chris uh, is not he's, he's brilliant in his own business, he shares a, 
about it. It's really kind of interesting around how you, you can be fantastic, but you don't have to keep it to yourself. Mm-hmm. And he's very generous with his time and his ideas. He shares everything, um, and not in a way um, he does. I think I think he uh, genuinely does it because he wants the industry to be better. Yeah. He's and not doing it for some kind of ways he's kickback or anything. He actually does it because he actually has an interest in the industry, yeah. which is fantastic. And that segues nicely into I was able to attend the LPMA conference this last year. Uh, I was able to, I got invited to speak, I went and spoke, and got to see the conference, and man, I was impressed. And I want to just give you an opportunity to talk about those conferences and how they're yep. run and what your plans are long term. So we, uh, in, from my history, I've, we've run the largest property management company in Australia, uh, and before we bought LPMA, they had the second largest. So now we have two conferences next year, with, which is the largest and the second largest. The one has 800 people, the other has about 500. Um, they're fantastic conferences. We also have one in New Zealand, which is the largest in New Zealand. And we're looking about, we've been talking about something over here as well. But uh, you know, we get a couple of people from America come across each year. It's wonderful to have. Mm-hmm. Uh, we actually mentioned on Jordan's podcast uh, last time, if, if anyone from America went to, wanted to go to any of our conferences, we'd comp them the ticket um, just out of courtesy to, and respect to anyone that would commit to their, to get on a plane across the Pacific. That's New Zealand um, and or Australia? Either one. Yeah, yeah okay. It's an open invitation. Anyone, any any of your listeners or whatever who, who wanted to come along, um, this is one of those Brad discounts. Yes. You, I'll have to work out how to do it. <laughs> I don't know how it works, but if they mention the word Brad Larson in some combination of Morse code or something, yeah. then, then you get a, as many tickets as you want. I mean, it's wonderful that that someone would commit that much to it. So we'd repay that commitment by giving a free ticket. That's awesome. So talk a little bit more about your plans to expand that. Yeah, so well, what we, uh, the our, really our vision is that what unites, there's more that unites the, the best property management businesses across Australia, New Zealand, the UK, than really is relevant, say, in Senate. You, you would have more in common with, say, uh, Chris Rolls mm-hmm. than you might have from uh, the lower end of your market in San Antonio. Um, and so how do we find all those people and bring them together, which is what LPMA is all about. It's about trying to get people that are at the top or aspire to be at the top. Not everyone, not every member would be in your class, but uh, people may aspire to be like you. Mm-hmm. And they're the guys we want LPMA to be. And so we're looking to expand into America, add more. We have a couple of members already. We have a team member on the ground here uh, working it out. And we've Americanized all the documents. So in the last few weeks, we've changed our S's disease and mm-hmm. done, you know, changed all that kind of stuff. But we're and we're, I really, we're here to learn more about it and look for ways to grow LPMA here because I think that's what, uh, it's less about an industry body in the kind of all-inclusive set. I'd like to have a an exclusive set of members that are about people who are good or who are excellent or aspire to be excellent. It's not really for people that just want to join so they can put a sticker on their door and tick a few forms. It's not mm-hmm. about that. It's about people who, um, you know, want to help drive this industry forward. Yeah, we talked about a couple of different techniques there. Uh, can you talk about the rebranding too? Yeah, so it, it originally we had, there were, LPMA had two uh, brands. One was LPMA, which stood originally stood for the Leading Property Manager Association, uh, sorry, of Australia. And there was LPMNZ, which is Leading Property Manager of New Zealand. They've both been rebranded to LPMA, but we've renamed that to Leading Property Manager Association. Mm-hmm. We've got a new brand. We've rebranded uh, to make it basically a universal brand. And there's ideas to have chapters that are relevant for geographies. But we've got a few things that, we're, that are new. We've launched a whole meetup program, which we just started in Australia and New Zealand, and we'll do here is just trying to get people to come together to share ideas. Because I think there's so much you can learn just from other people. Um, if you're, and it goes back to the early thing, I don't think we're competitors in, well, I've got this idea, I just don't want you to know about it, it's secret. I right. don't think that's, I mean, that's not going to change the, any of the outcome of this industry. Mm-hmm. It's about, well, I've got a good idea, you've got a good idea, or how can we learn from each other? And that's, um, that's what we're trying to drive. So the name really means something, I think, and we talk about this too, is it's Leading Property Managers Association. You know, leading, I love that term because it's not just a, a club that you can join for anybody who wants to be in, it's actually gonna be for the top tier type. That's right, companies. and, it, and it's, they don't meet certain requirements. Yeah, so it's, one thing we're looking ag- aggressively at at the moment uh, is uh, minimum expectations around performance. So it's not acceptable for someone to pay us a check and they want the sticker in the window because that just looks good for their, um, when they go out and try and win a new management. Uh, it's actually around, if you're not committed to being excellent, if you're not committed to learning, um, and if you're not the top person, like so you're one of your comments earlier, if you don't have that learning mindset of put something on the car and if you, you're not listening to trying to better yourself all the time, then it's not really, LPMA is probably not really the right thing. It's not, it's not, there are other associations where you can get 
you go and just get the letters or go and just get your kind of industry certification. Mm -hmm. So we're not trying to compete with that or do that. We're, what we're trying to do is to get the best people together. And that means not having some people as well. It's not just getting the best people, but you know, I've been around enough to know that someone like you wouldn't join an association or a membership if you walked into the room and didn't respect most of the people in it. If you walked in and said, well, these guys are all, uh, you know, insert the right word that we need use, then why am I turning up? I'm not learning anything. So you've got to learn from it. And part of that learning is you've got to learn help other people as well. So that's the really the culture we want to build is uh, about everyone getting something out of it for themselves. Yeah, I think it's going to be a, a tremendous thing that you bring over because the, the root factor behind it is it's it's a, an entity that wants to grow and is financially incentivized to make it work. Uh, and that's a big, big part of any successful venture. Mm. Uh, our staff members are financially incentivized and your team would be so forth to make it work here in the States. I'm very excited to see what you can put together. I know you're going to be working with uh, Jordan and Alex for the PM Growth Summit, mm -hmm. potentially for a joint venture. Uh, yeah, we're, so we're there. We're an exhibitor um, at the conference. We'll be, we'll be there. We're actually one of our teams speaking. I was on the agenda. I think, are you speaking again this year? I am speaking, yeah. yeah. fantastic. So there'll be a few of us there. Actually, Bob, who I should Bob I actually mention that. Bob Walter was the founder of uh, LPMA. And uh, it was great. One of the great minds of our industry. He'd, he'll be there. Yeah, he's MC in that. Mm. Uh, he's a good dude. He's been around for forty plus years. Uh, I love some of the facts that some of the things that we talked about in, in the conference room earlier was the valuations side. You guys are coming up with a formula uh, to work with some of the accounting issues to actually produce potential valuations for companies. Can you expand yeah. on some of that? Yeah. So one of the things we've been um, have done uh, is financial benchmarking, which ties in. There's one of the most common. Uh, accounting softwares in Australia is called Zero. It's like your QuickBooks or, or so on. And so we integrate with uh, Zero, and we do the same when we come here with QuickBooks. We take all your data and actually understand and with common chart of accounts, uh, take data out of your accounting system and out of your uh, property management system and give you financial benchmarking. And so understanding how much your business is worth and uh, uh, so on is really key key part of it. And then in terms of um, uh, you may, though, when I say it, you may be talking about valuations in terms of rental estimates. Is that where you're Rental estimates and also uh, valuations of the company because yeah. for so, two different reasons. One, if they ever wanted to sell or acquire. Yep. And two, if they ever want to go get a loan, uh, those types of things yep. are going to be plug and play. So, so all of that is we're working with uh, some people in Australia and so on the, on, on the business valuations. And taking The more data you have, the more you can drive uh, the valuation of business. And typically, most valuations have been done based on a multiple of revenue because no one's found out a better way to value a business. Right. It's just been in the absence of any other information, we can all agree revenue is relatively mm -hmm. solid because top line you can, revenue, you can yeah. look at a spreadsheet and this is your number and you report mm -hmm. it to everyone and that's the number. So that's been the number people have agreed just because that's the only one. And so everyone, we're talking to a few people, uh, valuers who are around this top particular problem and we don't have enough data to actually say, well, we can discriminate now between an agency or property management company and say, well, this one's better than that one. And whether it's lower staff turnover or higher landlord or owner satisfaction through MPSing them or uh, longer uh, leases, fewer vacant days and so on, they're better businesses. And so pound for pound, they're just because two businesses have the same top line revenue doesn't make them the same valuation. And so to not skip over that, you're going to be adding the net promoter score into that variable. That's right. That's super cool. I, don't, I didn't want, because you said NPS and I know it's glazing over pretty quick because you have so much stuff that's going into it. But net promoter score has been kind of the trend, uh, the, the hottest thing recently in the last few years for property managers is to actually put a quantification to the satisfaction levels of their tenants and owners. Yep. Well, it's such an important, we don't live in a vacuum. And so you can't just value a business on, well, you have a million dollars of revenue there for your business is worth $3 million. Right. It's actually, because our whole business is a recurring income stream. So you've got to be able to measure the kind of dur um, durability of that recurring income stream. And not only that, how much else you can cross sell in and other things. And um, there's not just the property management business will increasingly have to find other revenue sources, whether mm -hmm. it's from um, insurance or mortgages or all sorts of other bits and pieces you can bring into it. And so the better the stronger the relationship, the more valuable it is. This yeah. to me seems kind of pretty straightforward. So the net promoter score is one method. We're looking at that and a few other methodologies, but at the heart of it is satisfaction ratings on both owner and tenant. And I think the days of kind of tenants being uh, are unimportant is they've gone as well those days. Yeah, I agree with you. There's so many reasons to keep a happy tenant. Uh, renewals, reviews, I mean, the whole gamut. Uh, one of the things that we I want to talk about too is some of the accounting stuff because it's been my personal mission for a while and I'm working with Jordan on one of our uh, projects for a, 
accounting benchmarking project. I'm not sure what exactly they're going to call it, but essentially we all want to get on the same page. Mm -hmm. And you're on the same mindset of trying to do the exact same thing across the industry is to get everybody on the same page. GL accounts, definitions, terms, procedures, practices, or accounting. So if you and I wanted to compare our businesses, for example, uh, we can say, all right, here's my GL account, here's my books, and here's your books. And when you look at them, the terms are all the same, the GL numbers are all the same. And it's actually going to be comparing, as the, the old car salesman term, apples to apples. Mm -hmm. And you guys are a big part of that project and completely in that mindset. Yeah, uh, it, it's how can you move forward as an industry if we can't even agree the most common terminology? It's like yes. trying to get to someone from Germany and someone from uh, China to just to have a conversation, assuming they don't speak each other's language. It's just, yeah. there's, there's no point to having that. We're in the same industry. Why don't we try and standardize and say, can we just all agree that this GL code is for leasing fees mm -hmm. or this is going to be for uh, leasing preparation fees or whatever it might be. And so we went through that and have now working with about 80 agencies. We've gone through and harmonized those and getting the feeds and benchmarking them back. And the value that comes is less about just, well, I know that my uh, vacancy rate is 4% or whatever it is, or I've got 200 properties that are empty at the moment. That's that's kind of the first level insight into your own data. The most valuable thing that was not just knowing what you do, is what everyone else does. Mm -hmm. And I remember the first day I was in property management, not the first, one of the very first days, I went and got in the car and started meeting uh, business owners. And I went to this business and I knew less than anyone in the industry, probably, because I was days in. And this principal, the business owner, who had a relatively large business, sat down and said, everything's going really well. And he said, um, the staff, and I, so I asked him some questions. I thought, I was trying to think of things to ask. I said, so what's your arrears rate? Which is you know, how many properties uh, where they have tenants behind in their rent as a percent. And uh, he said, well, it was fantastic. Our arrears rate's really good. I said, what is it? He said, well, it was 25%. I said, 20, that seems high. I don't really know much about, he said, no, 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 it used to be 40. I said, okay. And he said, but my staff say 20, my staff told me 25 is like really good. I went, oh, okay. And I walked out and rang a few around and it was, you could, it was a good rate was 10, one, like 10th of that. Two and a half percent would have been something they would have mm -hmm. been proud of. And this person who was very smart, competent, had everything, but he just had no understanding of what the real world was doing. Yeah. So how can we as an industry move forward if we can't have that conversation? If it's all about just our little bubble, each company working on its own, how are we going to move forward? And so we have to agree these things to unlock the next round. And the next round of innovation is going to come from what you're trying to do with uh, what we, you will do with things like accounting, which is we can actually start comparing saying, wow, if we can have the same geo code for this particular thing and so on, then it will allow us to communicate. And through that communication, everything good is going to happen just because it's un I don't think we can predict everything that will happen, but things will be better. Yeah, just because we'll be able to communicate and we'll be able to learn from each other. And if we can adopt that and work with some CPAs here in the States and they bless off on it, that could be one, a starter kit for the new property management company owners to come in and just implement that exact GL code, mm -hmm. that accounting practice. And two, the others that have been around for years and years can kind of change their model. And it's not very painful. It's really not. No, it's not. To, to implement just some of those different GL codes, mm -hmm. rename one GL code to another. And then now all of a sudden we're on the same page because and I've talked about this before, is the end result of that is exactly what you pointed out with that owner. What is your arrears rate? Well, I don't know. It's fantastic. It's 25%. Yeah. How does he know if that's good or bad? No, he, he no, way, no way to know. He doesn't. But if you had an industry standard across, yeah. the, you know, whatever nation you're in, and you know the average arrears rate should be between 8.5 and 9.5%. Mm -hmm. You see, I'm getting down to the, the yeah. minutiae here, but then you would know, wow, you're at a 25%. Well, the industry average is 9% because we have the data to back yeah. that up. So that's, I, I would, that's the next, that's the next round. And then what comes when you start amassing more is where you get to, with some of the data that we now have uh, with what we're doing, is that you then get into, well, what should the number be? So then there's, say the average is 8%. Then what you actually see is at some point, working to get that lower becomes inefficient because going if you're at 20%, getting to 8% is really gonna change your business. But going from 8% to 4% will be less so. If you spend any more time going from 4% to zero, which is kind of like pushing two big magnets together, at some mm -hmm. point, the energy it takes to get further in is better expended doing something else. Yeah. And so we, I think you actually get to, once you get people, you can move from where we are today, which is everyone's in their own bubble, to then sharing data, eventually you get to, well, you start working out prioritization. And then 
I think what we'll get to with, with your effort you're doing again very quickly to say, well, you know, 60% of my business is doing X, Y, and Z in my revenue. That's good enough. Now let's work on the next problem. Mm -hmm. And it helps business owners know where to prioritize. And so you then get into, well, what should I work on? It's not just, am I good or bad, but everyone's going to have problems because you'll be out of range for two or three metrics probably just because you can't be excellent at everything. You've got to work out which one's more important than the other one. And the more data we can have, we say, well, getting this number is more important to landlord satisfaction or owner satisfaction from our experience that that's the number that matters. Yeah, prioritization should not be overlooked because that word means everything. It lets you know exactly where you should be focusing. So if you're losing... 20% 20% of your owners, right, which is a good metric. Uh, we've had that loss ratio in 2016 to, because we had a big sell-off. Mm-hmm. But we had we identified that it wasn't because we were doing something wrong. It's just because the market was so hot for sales. And so we were paying attention to that. Uh, and that's good to know because you, you understand what things need to be fixed. Yeah. And we've and, even talked about diving down deeper into neutral good and bad losses as far as losing owners potentially. And even taking the bad losses and dividing that up further. So eventually that's going to turn into a metric of, wow, you're, you, you're losing you know, 5% or 2% or 1% of your owners from bad losses because they fired you. It's, it's and then you're like, okay, well, we got to fix the service issue then. There's something wrong with my staff. That's, a, that's my priority to fix that. Absolutely. And, and such an important topic, just that alone around knowing how you lose business and why. And if you lose a business but do the sale, then that's I actually think that's something you should celebrate. I think if you lose a management because the – owner of that property decided to sell and they use your company to sell the property and you own you 3%, mm-hmm. then I think you should be having cake in the kitchen. Yeah, on the flip side yeah. of that, let's, let's talk the flip side, on the acquisition side. So if there's a national average or an industry average worldwide of where most owners are being found, that can be a tran- that can translate to anybody. So they kind of know which buckets to focus on. Do you focus on Google, Yelp, pay-per-click ads, you know, stand outside with a sign when you're naked. I mean, just whatever it's working to get you management agreements. Does it work for you? That it has not worked for me yet, thank goodness. Uh, but that, that's going to be where people can prioritize that word again, prioritize Absolutely. where they're gaining the business. So it's it goes good. both sides. Well, the industry is not, you have to assume that the industry is not randomly organized, that in, owners don't make random choices. Mm-hmm. So there must be a pattern. We just have to discover them all. And that's really, I think, the journey that the best people are going to be on is to work all that out. Yeah. And I think that's the exciting part. Is that we're now entering this new this new phase for our industry where it's no longer going to be acceptable. Uh, well, the best people are going to whatever is going to be cause and effect, but the best people are going to get better. Mm-hmm. And that's I think you want to to the extent people have a choice, you want to back those ones if you have a business. Yeah. If your thing is oh, everything's fine, um, I was you were mentioning earlier some of your blooper reels kind of treating. If you, if someone's under the misapprehension that this is not a service based industry, that they think that they're doing everyone a favor and Tenants are kind of annoying, and if you don't turn up at four o'clock, mm-hmm. we won't let you in, or we don't need to do technology, and we did it this way ten years ago, so why do we need to change? If any of those statements are floating around your mind, then unfortunately, I don't think this industry is for you. Yeah, because right. it, it's going to pass you by pretty quick. I mean, the world's moving so fast now, and what guys like you are doing with your businesses and um, pushing that further forward is the bars being raised every day Mm -hmm. and you might as well be chasing it. I kind of want to open the door for you just to kind of talk about whatever you might think could be appropriate. could be software, it could be conferences. Where do you want to take this? Well, so two two big things. We run a couple of things, actually. One thing is really to to start really developing membership base for the LPMA in America. I think that's trying to identify and and, and form relationships with the leading property managers in, in here is really the key and that's obviously a lot of work and big country and there's a lot of great people so that's that's anyone who's who's fantastic or aspires to be at that level we want to talk to and get to know and there's events we're putting on next year there's a day we're going to be holding um with a uh, uh what we call our leadership academy so it's a day we're doing in australia next year we're doing two of them we have a harvard business school professor who's one of our advisory board members who is, uh, we'll be doing a day and we'll do one in America as well for the top invitation only, um, the top businesses, top business people in our industry coming together for an education day. And it's not about trying to sell a product or anything, it's just coming together to learn from one of the best minds in business and how to be better business, but how to build a great company. And that's, we haven't set a date yet, but I'm really excited about that. That's, it will orient probably, that'll be the centerpiece of our calendar next year in terms of events. Um, we're looking to build out, I'm looking forward to meeting uh, the kind of some great consultants that want to work with us. So to the extent anyone 
is a consultant or wants to be a consultant, we've got a whole business model to support those people. And that's a uh, linch, linchpin to the LPMA business. So anyone in America that is interested in that would love to talk to those people. Um, but just generally uh, getting getting the leading people together. We've got a lot of things we're working on the tech, from a technology side, these dashboards, mm-hmm. and finding ways to get more data um, uh, into um, into the hands of uh into your countrymen is really what we're, yeah. what we're after. One of the hot buttons we talked about was uh, workflow automation. That seems to be kind of the, the missing piece in a lot of softwares. Uh, and you think there's some opportunity there to I think close it down? There's opportunities. I think in terms of actually the act of handling money in terms of accounting for money, I think the industry does a pretty good job of that. Mm-hmm. Unless, you're, unless you're kind of outside the range of people you want to work with, you treat, you, you've kind of handling the money well. So I think that's been solved. Uh, well, I think there's a lot of work being done on marketing and lead generation. What I think is one of the still in the unfulfilled potential industry is workflow. Mm-hmm. And workflow is um, just helping property managers be better. I don't think it's this big uh, idea of you need these kind of complex workflows. It's just helping people collaborate on problems. And it's not just between two property managers, but also between the property manager and the landlord uh, and the owner rather and the tenant. How do you get these people working together? And so building that out is something we're pretty eager to look into. Um, and leveraging some of the best practices we've got from LPMA and really turning those into work. Mm-hmm. So LPMA today has all the checklists and forms and all the training. The missing bit for me is turning that into something that's a bit more structured. Yeah, the workflow worth- automation to define that, in my opinion, is where you can look at one screen on your computer and you have everything that you need to be doing that day. That's right. So yeah. for example, to give Jordan and Lead Simple a, a quick plug, uh, we use Lead Simple to track all of our business development leads, our BDO team, business development staff, they do that. They walk in every day, look at the the, the, the Lead Simple um, dashboard, and they're like, okay, we got to call this person, email this person, text this person, you know, I got an appointment here, yep. you know, and they have their daily routine of what they got to be doing that day, all in a checklist of stuff to do. That's what workflow is. And I know there's some solutions out there. I've heard of people spending thousands to create their own inside of Podio, inside of Asana, inside of other platforms I'm forgetting off the top of my head but they spend thousands to create their own. No one's really come up with an industry-wide solution in a package uh, that can be widely adopted. I mean, there's some there's some software-specific ones, but then you gotta use the software, yep. and potentially switch from what you're using to what they're doing, and only really gaining one cool feature. Uh, and you do that, you ask yourself, what am I gonna be making from this, right? So as we looked at switching from A property, or excuse me, A management system to B management system years ago, my GM smacked me and said, is this going to make us any more money? I'm like, you're right. Why are, we, why are we even looking to switch? But if there's a solution that can come along to integrate that all in one place, that's going to really put the industry, that's going to perk their ears and mm-hmm. bring them to the table. I think part of those, um, the kind of core property management systems, particularly the ones that do the accounting, I think they'll fall into two camps or three. There'll be ones that want to work in an ecosystem environment that actually want businesses and property their clients being uh, the property management companies, to be able to choose best of breed things and work with people like us and so on. So that those open platforms, I think, will have a future. There'll be some closed platforms that say, we don't want to work with anyone, no one can touch the data. There's even some people will argue, it's not your data, it's theirs. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you're not even that. entitled to get it out. Those ones, I'm amazed, I'll just say on kind of on the side, I'm amazed that anyone would work and give their data to a company that argues by doing so, they own your data, not you. Isn't that, that amazing? That demands yeah. head spinner. Yeah. Uh, and they'll they'll either succeed or fail. They'll either be tremendously successful because they get it right like Apple, or they will be a they'll be a train wreck because they just won't be able to keep up. But that, mm-hmm. Who knows? Uh, and then there'll be people that just I think that some there are some age, some of the old systems may not carry through because there'll be a consolidation. But I think property management companies the more. What I don't think we do enough of as an industry is put pressure back on those companies and say, hey, we want this. And actually saying it's unacceptable for you to say that you own the data, not us. Or it's unacceptable that you're not opening your platform up because I want to work with this other company and I want to get, uh, I want to share my data with a financial benchmarking product. Mm-hmm. I want that to work. And they can bat us back one by one and say, no, we're not going to do that for you because we just don't do open. Um, but I got to say, if we if they got a thousand emails one morning, I think that they'd they say that's how they're going to, it's going to have to be done that way. So I think as industry, we haven't been vocal enough. And I think we kind of take technology as being almost, well, we'll just take what we're given. Mm-hmm. I think if we were more vocal, 
I think it'd be good for our industry if we were more on that. Yeah, there's definitely room for change there potentially. Yeah, the and it has to be, I mean, our industry is going to evolve and we need to be able to evolve quicker than just waiting for the next upgrade cycle yeah. for, the, for the whatever software you're using. I'm very excited to see your expansion into the States. Uh, I think it's definitely needed. I'm, I'm a big supporter of what you guys have been doing and are still going to continue to do. So uh, how does somebody get in touch with you if they want to follow up with you and have a chat? You can uh, email me at ben at lpma.com. That's pretty easy to remember. Easiest email I've ever had, actually. Yeah. So uh, ben at lpma.com, uh, that's the easiest way to do it. Or go to lpma.com itself uh, and learn more about it. Um, you can uh, uh, just you know, love to talk to anyone. Great. And um, uh, we can send you the books. If you can't find them on Amazon, we've got printed versions that we can put in, a, in an envelope and post. We can do whatever whatever you like. I just love talking about property management. And there's other products on there they can get into, such That's as right. CDs and things like that. Or All that kind of stuff, or they can look think about joining, becoming a member. Yeah. And there's a whole lot of stuff um, that, as a member, you get access to all the things that you describe, um, which are all sitting there on, online. And we'll have forums up soon. And uh, we've got, you'll start hearing about this day with a Harvard Business School professor for the leading groups, which that'll be, um, that'll be coming up in the next month or two. We'll be announcing some dates around that. Very excited to have you on. Big appreciations yeah, for you to make the effort to stop in. Uh, I think this has been a great episode. A lot of big things are coming through mm -hmm. what you guys are doing, and I just want to make sure we put it out there to the audience. I'm very excited. Uh, again, Ben, thanks for coming on. Thanks, Brad. All right, take care. To see a complete list of the offered discounts for products and services, visit my website at propertymanagementmastermind.com. These offers include discounts from the PM Growth Summit, website production through Property Manager's website, discounts on showing services from Tenant Turner, and many more coming all the time. Be sure to use the discount code BRAD, B-R-A-D. Check it out. This has been a podcast episode by propertymanagementproductions.com. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast, leave us feedback, and come back for our next episode.